His Holiness Shivas Das Vanchari ji joined ISKCON in Ghana, West Africa and got initiated in Sridham Mayapur, Bengal. He has obtained his Bhakti Shastri and Bhakti Vaibhava degree and teaches these courses in various institutes. He established the Bhakti Vedanta Academy for Culture and Education in South Africa for Shastriya education for devotees. Later, he became a Diksha Guru in ISKCON. Sir, you have exclusively travelled here to Goa to attend Vashvik Hindurash Mahotsav despite your busy schedule and long distance. This shows your dedication for the cause. We are privileged to have with you. I request you to please guide us. Jnana Timre Rasya Jnanan Jnana Shalakrayok Shakshuram Leitam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Yukta Padakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Sya, Sri Rupam Sagrajatam, Sahagana Raghunastam Bittam Tam Sajivam, Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Sri Radha Krishna Padam, Sahagana Nalita Sri Vishakam Bittam Sya, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinavini Namaste Krishna Padaya Prabhupada Asri Tatmane Shri Gaura Karuna Shakti Bhakti Tetri Itinavini Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Arvaita Gadarhar Siva Sari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Janti, Hindi nahi. I don't understand Hindi, <laughs> so I have to speak in English. We are very grateful for the organizers of this wonderful program to invite us all the way from West Africa to be part of this wonderful gathering of like-minded souls. The Hindu tradition which is known as Sanatara Dharma, is universal. It is not something limited to India. It is not something limited to the Earth planet. This knowledge of Sanatara Dharma is known by the devas, the demigods, on various planets. In the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna tells Arjuna that I spoke the signs of yoga to the sun god millions and millions of years ago. And there it is estimated that Bhagavad Gita was spoken to the sun god about 120,400,000 years 
The Bhagavad Gita was spoken to the sun god, Vivashwan. 120 million 400,000 years. Then Vivashwan spoke to Manu, the father of mankind. And Manu spoke to his son, Ishwaku. And this is how this knowledge has come down from the sun to the earth. And when this knowledge was lost 5,000 years ago, Lord Krishna repeated his message to Arjun, his disciple, devotee. And so from 5,000 years, this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita has been transmitted from guru to disciple, guru to disciple, guru to disciple. And somehow today we are privileged to have this knowledge. Also, if you look at all the major religions of the world today, you would find traces of Sanatana Dharma. For instance, in the Christian Bible, you will find the story of Noah. The story of Noah is taken from the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Bhagavad Purana. There it is described how Maharaj Satyavrat, Satyavrat was instructed by Masya Avatar. That is the story they, they took and put in the Bible as the story of Noah. It is very clear. The whole story is found in the eighth canto of the Bhagavad Purana. And they only took a little bit of it and put it in the Bible. If you go to the practice of Islam, it's interesting. Right now, millions of people are in Mecca. They've gone to circumambulate the Kaaba. That Kaaba is Shiva Linga. Believe it or not, a Shiva Linga. Now, if you look at any masjid, any mosque of the Muslims, what do you see on top? You see the moon crescent. You see the new moon with a star on every mosque. As any Muslim, what is the meaning of that? They don't know. I have friends and classmates who are Muslims. They are imams. And I asked them simple questions. I said, can you tell me the meaning of this moon crescent on top of your mosque? They don't know. The moon crescent is associated with Lord Shiva. When Lord Shiva drank halahar, the poison that was generated from the churning of the ocean of the milk, and Lord Shiva drank that poison, he became a bit dazed. And the moon god came to cool down his dizziness. And since then, the, crescent, the moon crescent remains on Lord Shiva's head. That is what you see on the mosque. But they have no understanding. They don't know. And for the fact that they have a black stone in Mecca, and they go to circumambulate, it, it connects immediately that they are worshipping the linga. So we can see how this Sanatana Dharma, the Hindu tradition, is the root of all religions on this planet. And therefore, we count ourselves very fortunate to be part of this ancient tradition, very deep knowledge, about the universe and beyond. I would like to say 
Now his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, he left the shores of India in 1965. And on the order of his spiritual master, Param Guru, Srila Bhaktivedanta Sarasati Thakur Prabhupada, ordered him to deliver the message of Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavad Purana to the Western world. So in 1965, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, he went west, he went to America. And for a whole year, he was struggling to find his feet. And eventually, he established the Hare Krishna movement, which he Christianed the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, ISKCON. And by that singular act, this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, this knowledge of Bhagavad Purana, this knowledge of Sanatana Dharma has spread all over the whole world. In fact, Srila Prabhupada will always be recognized as the greatest proponent of Sanatana Dharma because this culture, this rich culture, was only limited to India. Many gurus, many swamis, many acharyas have tried in the past to take this knowledge out of India, but they did not do it in such an effective way that Srila Prabhupada has done. Within 11 years, Swami Prabhupada had cycled the globe 14 times to all the major cities of the world and he established this movement and translated Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Purana, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Ramayana and all the teachings of Sanatana Dharma into English. And furthermore, they were, and he ordered his disciples to translate it into other languages, into Spanish, into French, into Russian, into various languages, major languages across the world. These books have all been translated into various languages. In, even in Africa, we have translated the Bhagavad Gita into Yoruba, into Chui, into Swahili, into many, many African languages. And very important people are realizing the importance of this Sanatana Dharma. I was showing a video clip to one gentleman here. One professor, Lunumba, from Kenya, he was addressing a theologian, a theologian, a class of theologians. And he told them that any person here who has not read the Mahabharata knows nothing. He's a Christian professor. He has, he has three degrees, three PhDs. And he's, a, he's a, what they call a visiting professor all over the whole world. And he's telling these theologians that all of you sitting here, if you have not read the Mahabharata, you don't know anything. And they were sitting there watching him. That tells us that intelligent people around the world, they are beginning to recognize the importance of Sanatana Dharma. If this traveling professor, visiting professor, Christian professor, it is making such a statement before theologians, Christian theologians, then we can understand how important this Hindu dharma is. There are many things I can say, but I'll just kind of run through what we are doing in West Africa, just to show you how this Sanatana dharma is spreading. Swami Prabhupada, before he left the planet, 
He established 108 temples around the world. He left the planet 1977. As we stand here speaking, we have over 900 temples and projects around the world. 900 temples, <laughs> restaurants, schools, farms, and so many other types of projects all across the world. And they are all studying Bhagavad Gita, they are all studying Srimad Bhagavatam, they are all studying Ramayan, they are all studying the Manu Samhita, they are studying all these philosophies of Sanatana Dharma. So in, in West Africa, we have a number of countries where we have temples established. Not only West Africa, the whole of Africa actually. Uh, countries in Africa that we have temples include Ghana, where I come from. In Ghana, we have 12 temples. In Nigeria, they have 12 temples. In Togo, they have two temples. In Cote d'Ivoire, two temples. In Congo, Democratic Republic, one temple. In Benin, two temples. In Liberia, one temple. In Sierra Leone, one temple. In South Africa, 12 temples. Botswana, one temple. Malawi, one temple. Uganda, two temples. Kenya, seven temples. Tanzania, one temple. Ethiopia, one temple. Cameroon, one temple. Burkina Faso, one temple. Zambia, one temple. Totaling 57 temples. <laughs> are found, they are found in sub sahara Africa. The north of Africa is Arabs. Morocco, Egypt, Algeria, Tunisia, those are Arab countries. The south of the Sahara is the black race. So south of Sahara, we have 57 temples where they, on daily basis, they are studying Bhagavad Gita, they are studying Srimad Bhagavatam, they are reading Ramayan, they are studying Manu Samhita, and on and on and on. Of course, we have a lot of challenges. There are some fanatic Christians and fanatic Muslims. They think they know better. They think they have all the knowledge. And so they think Hinduism should not be part of African uh, teachings. But interesting, you will find traces of Sanatana Dharma in African culture. In African culture, they believe in demigods, Devatas, they believe in life after death, reincarnation, they believe in ghosts, they believe in many things that are discussed in Sanatana Dharma. So even though we have people against us like the fanatic Christians and fanatic Muslims, but there are a number of Africans who think that if they have to adopt anything foreign, it is the Sanatana Dharma that actually speaks more about their own culture. Then we have the, how are we overcoming these difficulties? We are overcoming these difficulties by having extensive Nagara Harinams. Throughout Ghana, we do a lot of Harinams, we sing and dance on the street, and we distribute the books, and we preach to people, and we have lectures in schools, and colleges, and in this way, the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, the knowledge of Bhagavad Purana is spreading across the whole sub-region. What is the scope? The scope is unlimited. Africa is described as the sleeping giant. And as we continue to push this knowledge, Gradually, many more people, many intelligent people will come to know about the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, knowledge of Bhagavad Purana, and they would begin to adopt the ways of Sanatana Dharma. And if the whole Africa wake up to begin to accept the knowledge of Sanatana Dharma, 
we are sure that a lot of a lot of people will want to follow this tradition. In fact, I'm coming from Kenya. I was invited for a program, Jagannath Rata Yatra in Kenya. And while I was there, one lecturer from the university, he came to the temple. And then when he got to know that I'm from Ghana, he came to speak to me. And he told me something interesting. He said they have done a survey to find out which of the African countries is Hinduism growing at a very fast rate. And to his surprise, they found out that in Ghana, where I come from, many people are becoming Hindus. So he's asking me, how are you doing it? What is your secret? I said, well, there is no secret. The secret is we are, we are conquering the media. We are making friends with the media. They give us a lot of interview, radio and TV. We are going to schools and they are allowing us to speak to the students. We are doing some harinams. We go out on the street and we do harinams and distribute the books. We also do free food to the schools, free food to children, free food to the needy. And so people are beginning to realize that this uh, Sanatana Dharma people, they really care for us. And so why wouldn't they change? So therefore, there is a big scope that in the years to come, many more people will read Bhagavad Gita and many more people will read Srimad Bhagavatam and Ramayan and things will change. To end my story, there is a very big evangelist, one of the biggest evangelists in Ghana. He has a huge congregation and he has a big, big university. Many years ago, we tried to get him to come on a program with our spiritual master. Anytime our, spirit, our guru would come to Ghana, we arrange a TV program for him, and we'll get some Christians to share the program with him. So all those Christians who came to share the program with our guru Maharaj, they didn't feel very comfortable because they didn't have much knowledge to speak. And Guru Maharaj will just overshadow all of them in their presentations. So they began to shy away from him. They don't want to share a program with him. So when we went for this big evangelist, he would not come. We would go to his office. They would tell us he has traveled. Anytime we would go for him, he has traveled. So we decided to leave books for him. We left a Bhagavad Gita for him. We left Science of Civilization for him. We left some number of books in his office. And we told the secretary, please give these books to your, to your evangelist. So we, sh we, we are sure the books were delivered to him. And he began to read. And then the more he read, the more he realized, these people have something to offer. So one day, he was preaching his church. And then... Something just entered his mind and he started to speak about the Hare Krishna movement. He said, my dear congregation, I want to tell you something. Those people you see on the street with the marks on their foreheads and their ties on base sheets, those people, they have a lot of knowledge. I will urge all of you, when you meet them, you should get their books and read. I have been reading their books, and the books are amazing. They have all the knowledge we need. So one of the elders of the church raised his hand and said, Reverend, if you think the Hare Krishnas have all their knowledge, then let us all go and join them. <laughs> and Reverend said, not possible because we have got some responsibility. We have a university, we have colleges we have to take care of. So if you go and join the Hare Krishnas and begin to put on the sign on our forehead and wear their beshis, what are, how are we going to cater for these universities? So, but I, I urge you, if you get a chance, read their books. 
So most of our Bhagavad Gita's are bought by this church. Every now and then, many, many people are coming to the temple to buy Bhagavad Gita so they can read. There is another church. He also had a Bhagavad Gita. He read it. He loved it. He told his church members, go to the Hare Krishna temple, get Bhagavad Gita, and learn more about God. And then there is a third uh, reverend minister. He is promoting vegetarianism because he read one book about vegetarianism, the benefits of vegetarianism. He started promoting vegetarianism in his church. I was walking past some place and a lady called me and said, you are from Hare Krishna? I said, yes. He said, our pastor is talking about you, that you are teaching a very healthy diet. I want to learn something about vegetarianism. And to end the story, one of our ex-presidents, there was a program on the Hare Krishna, pro, uh, Hare Krishna movement on the television, which the president saw. And when he listened to it, he felt this is the best message I've ever received. So the following Saturday, every Saturday, they play different religious programs. The following Saturday, the president called the director of TV and said, that Hare Krishna program, please play it again. I want to hear it. So it was played on national television. And then the following week, the third week, he called the director of TV again and said, that Hare Krishna program, play it. So the director of TV put it on the, on the television and he was playing. Then the director, the minister of information under which broadcasting operates, called the director and asked him, why are you playing the Hare Krishna program again and again and again? Is that the only program you have in your station? And he said, your boss. Your boss ordered me. He said, who is my boss? He said, the president. And his phone went silent. He could not say anything. So that is how much this Sanatana Dharma is being appreciated in West Africa and in Ghana in particular. Thank you very much. Swamiji, you have explained very nicely that Sanatan Dharma is foundation of the whole universe. Despite many challenges, you have translated Bhagavad Gita in many languages. You are doing so much work to spread Hinduism in South Africa. Not only us, but every Hindu is grateful and we pay gratitude unto your holy feet. <laughs> 